you're going to be creating a non-color wheel and your goal is going to be using just the three primary colors is to mix your entire color wheel by correctly using the amounts of those three colors to get your colors on the color wheel. Because what's unique about your primary colors is they will make any color on the color wheel as long as you mix them correctly. So your goal is going to be to create your paint colors mixing together your red, yellow, and blue correctly. And you're gonna start by choosing correct brushes to do that with. And there's different kinds of brushes that you can paint with. Traditionally, your square brushes are the ones that you wanna use for um, projects like this one. They, when um, painted, will create a straight line when you paint with them without having to do anything sideways. They're also great for being able to mix up and load your brushes rather than using what's called a palette knife, which we will not be using. Your round brushes are typically for watercolor paint. This particular brush is called a script brush, and it is um, your small liner brushes. They actually come different sizes and different ways. And when you paint with it and you turn it, while you're painting, you're getting, you have a point. So you may need that one, but more than likely you're gonna need one of your two smaller red brushes for what you're doing. And I would suggest the medium sized brush because it's gonna pick up a little more paint when you're mixing, because that's what you do first. So before you actually paint, you have to make sure that all of your pieces are traced and you have to decide where that yellow piece is gonna go whether you wanted it to start at the top of your paper, whether you wanted it to be near the bottom of your paper, those are the decisions you have to make. Use lightly your um, lettering because you have to be able to erase all this when it's dry. And you're just gonna take from your um, colors and you're just gonna mix those, excuse me, paint those straight. And all you have to do is get some paint on your brush And that's it. So you'll do all of your primary colors first. Then I would suggest that your goal is to do your secondary colors next. Now, your yellow is gonna be your most transparent. So if you have a lot of dark pencil, you may wanna uh, correct that first. And remember, you wanted to do your outlining outside of your letters, not necessarily on them. It's not that it really matters, but it, it that way, if it needs to be hidden, it can. The other thing you need to remember is that you have to clean your brush very well in order to make sure you're not transferring that into your other colors or into your other um, containers for other people since we're sharing. And you have to go to the bottom of your bowl so you can hear that noise there. And then I always drag my brush on the edge of my bowl because it helps to just get that water out. And then when you use your paper towel, you're gonna to get the remaining amount of that out in order to make sure that you don't have a lot of water because this is acrylic, it's not watercolor paint. And when you're using acrylic, you do not want to mix those together, uh, or excuse me, have water in them because you make them too thin. So again, you're gonna paint all of those lovely primary colors first, get those on your paper and get those out of the way. You'll notice that I don't paint sideways. I'm always pulling my brush, whether I'm pulling it away from me or to me, because a square brush will make a wonderful line. And that's one of the things that you wanna make sure that you are doing when you're painting. And it also helps straighten things up. So pull this way, I'm pulling away from me. You'll find that most of the times I'm pulling uh, to me, depending on what I'm doing. And you can always turn and rotate your paper as well, just like you've done with anything else. So you do what works for you. All right, so when you get ready to start uh, mixing your paint, you always, always, always start with your lightest color first. So when you're making any of your colors on your color wheel that are using yellow, well, that's pretty easy to know that it's going to be your lightest color first. But then when you get to mixing colors that have to do with your red or your blue, you have to make the decision. All of the paints are different. This particular paint shouldn't be too difficult for you to see um, which one you want to do first. Now, the 
color wheels that you have are strictly for guides only. Your paint is not necessarily gonna give you the color that you see here. Again, all paints are different. So if you start with your yellow, that's fine. And you're just gonna go in, you don't have to hold it up. I like to hold it so you can see it. And you're gonna pick up your paint on your brush. That really probably should be enough. Usually to do your uh, secondary colors, you're gonna be doing your uh, equal amounts. Again, you have to clean after each and every one of your uh, colors that you use. And you can see that I left some in there. So I'm gonna go back in the bottom of that. That's the other good thing. And I'm right-handed, so I like to keep everything to the right. And I know that you can't see that oftentimes. And um, let's say that I wanted to do my yellow green. So this is a very strong color. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm actually just gonna put some blue here because I'm gonna use it differently. And then I can just come over here and I can pick that up with my color and I can mix it into my yellow. And you're gonna just mix it, keep it small. You wanna keep um, sort of like a, not even a quarter size because of the smallness of what we're doing, but nothing too larger than that. And then the color that you get could be the color you're searching for or that you need, or it could lean a little bit towards your color wheel. If it's leaning towards your primary color of blue, then you're gonna have a sort of a blue-green. If it's leaning towards your yellow, it may not be that you have green, but you may end up with a yellow-green. And that's one of the things that the whole objective is, can you determine which one is which color? So I'm gonna take that and that's gonna be, um, sorry, wrong spot. But the nice thing about acrylic is you can paint over your colors um, just fine because it's opaque you can layer acrylic so it can dry and you can come back over it and you can paint more color on it. And you go back and you get more paint as you need it. If you're painting and you end up with it being white or it's streaky, again, you'll notice that I'm pulling my brush to those straight edges so that I can make a nice line because you do want your paint to be even when you're um, painting with it so that when it dries, it's not too streaky. Normally I'm turning my paper around to do that. And then I'll clean my brush. And I'm gonna, if that doesn't look really good with my next color, I can paint over it and use it for that. So I'm gonna go into my water bowl. Remember, you're going to the bottom of your bowl, going to back and forth gently, not squishing it around because you call the, cause the bristles to spread out when you are doing it too harshly. It's just a simple back and forth. Drag that over the edge of your bowl, get your water off, and then make sure you're using your paper towel to get the rest of the water off. And if you have any residual color, it'll help you do that too. You can have too much water at times. Now, I still have quite a bit of paint. You may or you may not have a lot of paint. You may not. You may end up where you have to completely mix new paint. But because I have some left, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to pick up my blue and I'm gonna add some more blue to that and I'm gonna make my blue green. But the thing is, is you have to have enough paint. If you don't have enough paint, it's gonna be drying and soaking into your styrofoam. So you could have this lovely color, but you might not have enough of it and it may dry before you get it painted. And then that just means you have to redo it. So make sure you have enough. I just happen to have enough paint here that I can use it for this next space. Usually I'm completely mixing a new color as I go for each one. And I'm fine with you doing that too. I'd have you mix them up and have them ready to paint, but they end up drying on you before you get them on your paper. So that's not, doesn't always work. Then I'm gonna have to take my yellow and I'm gonna have to paint, uh, create, or excuse me, get more yellow in order to paint my yellow green. So I'm gonna show you that one real quick. Your violet and your uh, red violets, those are probably gonna be the hardest ones for you to tell if you have them correct because they are two dark colors and with the paint that we use. So again, regardless of what you're making, orange, green, yellow, you're always gonna start with your lighter color first and you're gonna load that brush up. This is what's called just loading it up. It's sort of like thinking in terms of making your brush a spoon. And then again, you have a lot of cleaning that you have to do before you can go and use another color. Then this is gonna use less. When you get into what are called your intermediate colors, those colors that have two names, yellow, green, red, orange, you're gonna use less of one of your primaries so that your color leans towards that color 
on the color wheel. Because if it's a yellow and a blue color, then and you want yellow green, then you have to mix it again. You want to keep those small little quarter-like shapes on there, and then you'll come on and you'll paint that. When you get ready to do your red-orange, you're gonna do yellow first. And I'm gonna show you just a quick mixing and then I will let you get busy. Again, make sure your paint is smooth. I don't normally paint backwards away from me. I just haven't, I'm not moving all my things to get my paint out of the way to do that to turn my paper, which is my preference. You do what works for you. All right, so let me just show you real quick if we're doing oranges. Again, yellow is always your lighter color first. And don't leave your paint on your painting. I'm just doing that for the sake of the video. Have your paint over to the side. Have your water over to your side so that you're not dripping across your work. As you can see, I do have paint where it does not belong. All right, so. If you're making orange, same thing. You'll pick up your paint. If you want to put it on your tray, you can do that. And then you just mix it in. If it is, in this case, a little too red orange, or if you think it's too red orange, then paint that in your section where it's red orange. If it's not, and it's actually your yellow orange, then paint it in your yellow orange. And then again, if I'm doing my orange and then I'm gonna do my yellow orange, I'm supposed to have less paint. It could be that you mix it and you get something that's similar or not. And you may wanna do those groupings together. Maybe you wanna do your green and your blue green and your yellow green together. And then you would have them on your tray so that you can see them. Maybe you want them to be, uh, if you paint fast enough, that's the whole thing. If you don't paint fast enough, it doesn't matter. Your paint just dries on your tray. So I'm just showing you these, and you can already see that that's going to start drying because wherever you have thin paint, it's going to dry. And when you get to your red-orange, that means you're going to have more red than you have yellow to make your red-orange. So I just kind of wanted to give you a glance of that. And you, there's 12 different red-oranges I could make. There's six different yellow oranges. I mean, there's so many different variables of those, but that's the whole point is, can you recognize them and then can you paint them where they go? And then I would do my blue and my red to make my violet. And then you have to decide which one you believe is darker and that's the one that you won't use first. So if red is lighter to you, use your red one first. And in this case, it might be best. And then you're gonna do all of your um, violets and you're gonna paint the entire color wheel so that you have all of the colors of the color wheel made with just those three primary colors.